little bandit boy has just woken up and he's enjoying some banana. Becky's going to take him in a minute to have him on night shift with a hot water bottle and make sure that he's warm and comfortable for the night. He's had some pain meds at the vets <coughs> after all his stitches and had his leg, leg removed. Um, and we just hope he continues to do okay. It's a bit touch and go at this stage. Hello, little boy. Oh, he's not really aware of us because he is wild and he would be very scared if he was fully conscious. We're not 100% sure what happened to this little one, uh, but sometimes during mating season there is a lot of male fighting and uh, the little juveniles get uh, caught up to in this and can get severely injured. And uh, I think that's what's what's happened here. So this is one of the wild monkeys in the area. Um, we've pulled him in because he's in a very bad way and we're going to see how we can help him. Unfortunately, his one leg was damaged in such a way that it, it had to be removed. The other leg was degloved, but we've managed to get the vet to re-stitch everything up. So we hopefully we can save everything that is there. Uh, he's looking strong enough. Um, so hopefully everything we're doing is going to help. But at the moment, uh, things are still a little bit of touch and go, and we'll see how things go from here. So this little guy's had all his meds this morning, and now he's tucking into some nice food. He's got a hot water bottle. I'm just keeping him quiet so that he can rest his one remaining leg. But he's definitely bright and alert this morning, and he's hydrated as well. He's certainly loving uh, the diversity of food he's got for breakfast here. Probably doesn't know what to eat first. Um, so for a, a wild monkey, this is, is really quite something. So I think in a way, he's quite comforted. Um, he had a hard time, but at least now he looks like he's on his way to recovery. And uh, we just got to fatten him up and build up his strength a bit and see how it goes. Bandit Boy's name is now Simeon. Thank you, Simone, for naming him. He's really enjoying his pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, so he's got extra protein to help his leg repair, extra nutrition. His leg's still sw very swollen and his foot, but that's to be expected. But the little chap is in good spirits. <laughs> Certainly a feisty one when we take him out to try and clean the wounds. Simeon's just outside getting some sun. Although he's still in a small area, he can at least feel the sun on him and you can see he's able to drink from the bunny bottle by himself, which is good, makes our lives easier. He's got a little blanket there that he can sit on, which makes his leg more comfortable as well. Just done another bandage change for Simeon. Ellie's got a nice hold on him, so lots of head massages while he falls asleep and we're going to put some vet wrap, a nice pink one on today. One bandage finished, nice pink one today. Got some wound magic cream on underneath there. And then ready to go back to eat dinner. Simeon's spent all day in this um, taller cage so that he can get used to climbing and using his leg. And as you can see, he's actually amazingly getting around the cage just fine. He's just waiting for his medications and food now. So he's exploring his branches in there. You can't see it too clearly, but you can just see that he can use his leg. So Simeon is uh, doing extremely well there. Wounds are healing nicely, he's getting around very well, which is fantastic, got a great appetite. Uh, we are a little bit worried uh, about that eye, we don't think he'll get uh, sight back into it at all. Uh, we do know it has been like that for quite a while, so it wasn't really anything influenced by this uh, recent uh, injury. But uh, we're worried there's some infection in the eye, so as soon as we get him into a little bit of a better condition, uh, we'll be going to the vets and seeing what we can do to try and treat that. 
uh, doesn't seem to be worried about it, so it's, it's not something that's irritating or hurting him. So it doesn't look like there's any, any reason to have the eye removed. Uh, we'll just try and get some uh, medication to see if we can get rid of any infection, infection if there's anything like that there. Just changed Simeon's bandage and he's on his way to the vet just to get that one eye checked to see if there's anything we need to do before we release him. As you can see it's blue and uh, we just want to get the okay before we release him back with his troop and get his leg a bit stronger. His tail wound is healing very nicely now. And he's a little miracle. He's pulled through a lot. Just arrived at the vet with Simeon and we'll see what she has to say. So Simeon is just on his way back from the vets now. So the vet said we're going to try some eye drops for the eye and uh, for a week see how that goes and then add in some extra eye drops again tomorrow um, and uh, hopefully he can keep the eye and not have, it, have to have it removed which will be good. It's not fun only having one leg and then one eye too, but um, yes, so it's hopeful and he's on his way back now. So he has got some uveitis in the eye, some inflammation and a little bit of infection too which we're treating for. Well, we were called out uh, today, early this morning, uh, by one of the lodges nearby. A little monkey uh, wasn't moving so well for the last three days and uh, wasn't getting away from people and the troop wasn't taking it with. Um, so they asked if we could pop down there and come and have a look and see what was going on. And uh, we found this little guy there. Um, he couldn't really move around at all. Creeped underneath the car and we managed to catch him. And uh, we've just brought him now uh, to the foundation to assess him, uh, just to see what the injuries are and uh, what uh, we can maybe do to help him. I'm just uh, a little concerned now because uh, I notice it looks like. Uh, burn uh, marks on this little guy um, and it looks like electrical burn so there's a possibility he either was on his mom and uh, they touched the electrical electric pylon or something like that and uh, his arms and everything like this are all burned so the problem is you don't you don't really see any wounds or anything anywhere because um, this sort of cauterizes you wherever the the electricity went through so um, now this is like a very serious little case at the moment Normally I'm, I'm not happy um, to actually try and treat them because the serious of electrical wounds, they, they, a, a terrible thing. These pylons are, are really a horrible thing towards these, the, this monkey. So uh, we're going to have to do some real serious assessment and uh, just see what's, what we need to do. If you smell the arm, does it smell like fire? Smell the arm, yes. Does it smell like burn? Just don't get your nose don't in your mouth. Me. So the most important part now um, is basically to get fluids into this little guy, get him uh, rehydrated, um, just to make sure he's got the strength and everything for us to carry on with any treatments if we have to do. Um, it's difficult to assess what's the best uh, method at the moment because he has survived on his own for three or four days. Uh, so it means he has got a fighting chance and he and is fighting to live so uh, we've got to try and see what chance we can actually give him so Josie's also come down just to see what uh, her feelings are uh, with the little one and also make some kind of assessments um, it is still very very difficult at this stage uh, as I said earlier from the point of view uh, that this little one has lasted a couple of days means there is uh, a, a good chance of survival but uh, I really don't like getting my hopes up in these situations because uh, 
most cases uh, they last a couple of days and and end up dying on us and it's uh, really not a nice thing to go through but uh, we're not 100 percent sure yet um, of what's actually happened so uh, we're just trying to have a look and see what we can can do see if we can treat the wounds and uh, give it a little bit of time um, sort of to see how things going um, before we take our next next steps it is a little female so it's not a little male um, it is a little female so uh, we're going to try and um, do what we can and treat the wounds uh, as burn wounds and uh, see if we can help in any way and what its uh, survival chances are going to be Well, it is definitely uh, some form of burned wounds that this little guy's uh, that she's had. So uh, we're doing the dressings according accordingly for um, burn wounds, um, just to try and help uh, soften the skin where we can, get rid of the dead tissue. We've got a special cream that we actually use that helps get rid of the dead tissue. Um, the limbs and things like this are still moving, which is quite surprising. Um, so there does seem a little bit of movement, but at this stage it doesn't. Uh, really mean much so we just got to treat what we can um, and give it a couple of days just to see how things are going how the progress goes uh, before we can really tell uh, what's quite necessary and what uh, what damage has actually been been caused to the limbs so just attempted a bandage on this little one but really wasn't very still and already got some of it off as you can see um, we have put some burn cream on um, to help soothe the wounds and she so far has had lots of hydration, electrolytes, and she's also had some pain meds and some antibiotics and uh, some fruit, which she's eating. She is passing normal stools and she urinated okay. Um, so we just have to see how she goes. It's really hard with these cases because sometimes they do end up losing limbs. We have got some monkeys in the wild, for example, in, in Zanin area um, that don't have both their front arms, for example, because they've been electrocuted by pylons. It's quite sad, these high power lines. So we'll have to see how she goes and uh, we'll have to redo the bandage again later on as she's uh, been busy taking all the tape and everything off. But for now, we've done what we can. You can also see that his her hair is singed as well. And she spotted the camera. Her hair is singed as well, which uh, can also give you a sign of electrocution there on her back. Let's see. It's important for any electrocutions or burn patients that we use non-stick dressings. Otherwise it can be horrendous to get that bandage off and we don't want it to stick to the wounds. We've just bandaged both arms on our new arrival. She's not happy with it, so we're going to put her back in her cage now and let her get some rest for the night. Poor little bubby. But the legs seem to be functioning, but she's not happy with the bandages. So off she goes to bed, little miss. Well, this is the next uh, morning. You can see how well um, this little one's actually doing. Full of life, um, eating everything we've offered. Um, Possibly it hasn't eaten for a couple of days anyway, and now it's got this amazing food like bananas and pawpaws um, and all kinds of delicious things. So, whichever way it goes, at least it's having a, at least she's having a very nice meal, um, getting herself like fattened up a little bit, and uh, we can see how it goes. But all in all, this is very very good signs. Um, we're still not out of the dark. Um, it's, it's very difficult with these kind of patients to actually say which way things are going to go uh, because sometimes when they do so well um, it's just because the, the body's uh, given them this extra adrenaline and, and uh, they don't seem to last much after that. But uh, at the moment um, we're quite happy, eating very well, very feisty and uh, we'll see how things go from here. Being a 36 degree today, I decided to take him up to the house because uh, I have air conditioning there so he can cool down a bit um, rather than keep him down in surgery where it's a little bit warmer. Uh, main thing is we also need to get his body temperature down 
and uh, he has been eating. He's also passed some stools, so he's carrying on with his bowl now. And he's been uh, vocalising a little bit as well. So this little lady's name is now Shallon. She's drinking some coconut water. She's had both her bandages changed on her arms. It is quite difficult because she's very lively. She's also having electrolytes, rehydration, lots of vitamins. We're just about to Hello. put another bandage on for Shallon. She's got a lot of cream on there still, but she is using her arm a lot more, which is great. And she does move it, as you can see, which is wonderful. So we're just giving her a break from the bandage for a little bit. And then we're going to put it on just now, but we want to just wanted to check the movement of her arm. Shallon's going to the vets today. She's just getting some sun outside, seeing the outside world before she goes to the vets. Just collected Shallon from the vets. Unfortunately, she had to have her right arm amputated because with these electrocution wounds, then they tend to go gangrene and sloth off and so on. So despite everybody's efforts. She did end up losing an arm, but she does have her two legs and her one arm. So we'll get her back to the sanctuary. I'm just going to check she's awake and everything. And then uh, we'll be doing a lot of wound care and dressings here forward. So just let Shallon have a bit of a walk around because oh. movement's obviously good for circulation. So we've got a bigger area that she's moving around in and also she's been getting a lot of bloating as well so we want to make sure her bowels are functioning well we have tried elevating the food but she seems to prefer eating it off the plate like this She really enjoys the corn cob and again she prefers eating it like this to it being cut up small so we leave her to it. She's quite a little independent lady, doesn't like her food being messed with. Here we are at the vets again because Shallon's been very poorly, her abdomen's very swollen and she's got a very warm tummy as well. She's not been eating well and her gums are pale so we'll see what the vet says. Vet's just gone to get the x-ray ready, so we're going to take some x-rays of her. Um, she suspects she's also not absorbing protein well um, and got some other complications, so we're just getting that ready. Shallon's arm today. She's doing the bandage change. She can move it around. Well, she's not going to now, but... I'm just letting him use her arm a bit before bandaging again. Drinking some GI Sustain. She's got some additional nutrients and protein in. She's not wanting to eat much solid food at the moment, but this just helps her get through the worst days of the peritonitis. And she really enjoys it. Well, what a lucky little monkey Shallon is. Due to her um, great effort in fighting to survive, we've given her every chance we've, we can. We'd just like to think, thank everybody out there for helping us support her, especially with her tremendous uh, vet bills. But she's doing tremendously well, and it's going to be fantastic to see how this little one progresses along the line. Simeon and Shallon, two remarkable little monkeys with a fight inside them just to get better and wanting a second chance. Thanks so much for Josie for all the effort she's put into these little guys, otherwise they would never have made it. And thank you to everybody out there for your support covering some of our vet bills, your donations, concern. It's remarkable and that's what's helped these little guys have a second chance in life. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you in our next video and hopefully with the next season starting.